Hey, so we're looking at the image animation uh, that's been added in Kinetic Text Animator version 1.09 and fine-tuned in version 1.09b. Um, there's uh, the, the animation options may seem like they're simple, but I wanted to show you that there's actually quite a bit that you can do with it that's pretty cool. I've got a sample here where the I've got a uh, basically a desktop and it's showing through to the background. There's kind of a hole cut here. And then uh, let me go ahead and play this animation. It's pretty simple. I've got a text animation and then I've got a hand pointing at it and then going away. So um, I wanted to show you that there's a, a number of things we can do because when you combine different images and you can do some masking and all kinds of neat stuff like that. So first of all, when you, uh, you can browse for any image, I have to have a new block. Let's go ahead and click down here. So I'm, I'll just temporarily make one here. So I got a block here. And if I browse for images, I can go to any of my images here. Um, we're looking here at some images for an upcoming product that we're working on. And uh, let's come here so I could come in and I could, you know, select, I don't know, let's do a globe and uh, import it. And then I can click on it and size it or and position it. We don't have, uh, it's pretty much what you can do with it. If, you, if I can't go away from it, it's going to actually notice that it automatically created an animation. Uh, that's because if uh, we, we had before in the, the early first version we were you needed to actually apply an animation before it would be put on the timeline and a lot of people weren't figuring that out so we've gone ahead and just we take the last the last animation that you created and we uh, do it and then you can edit it from there so of course you can always delete the block uh, as well so let's go ahead and do that because I've already got stuff here to work with. Now I wanted to show you, of course, we have uh, different options for zooming in. Now on the desk here, uh, for the little uh, desk that we have, I'm just using a peer, which pretty much is no animation, it just appears. Um, and it's useful for exactly what we're uh, looking at here, kind of a mask going on here. So um, I've what I've done, if I, if I wanted to, I can take this and uh, I'm going to show you how to Z order this and change it so where it looks like it's inside of the monitor here in just a second. But let's continue to look at these. We've got fade in, zoom in, and then we've got four directional arrows, and then we have some effects. Now, the effects pretty much work best with the directional ones. I'm not sure if they work with fade in or zoom in. Uh, they might. I haven't actually had a chance to check out myself, but they're, they're were they were designed for the directional animations and so you can uh, use those to mix things up. Of course you have the end speed of how fast it comes in, how long it's going to stay on the screen and if it's going to when how fast it's going to leave. And then finally if you wanted to just go ahead and have it uh, animate in but not leave, you can turn on this option and then these will be ignored. That pretty much is everything um, related to the basics of the animation. Now, of course, whenever you move something around, if you don't apply an animation, let's go ahead and go back and look at this and note that it really didn't change. The Oh, it did too. Uh, I thought it wouldn't, but it did. So that must be new in version 1.09. Uh, I did not know that. So good. Um, 109B, that is. Uh, so uh, now that I I know that, so you, you, now you know it too. So... <laughs> um, now, when when this is, we export these uh, are now automatically deselected, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you want to, you can of course always click somewhere so that it's not uh, selected. Uh, but you do of course need to click on it in order to uh, size it or move it around and stuff. So uh, same thing with this. I can't. I can. I can move this around if I want to and or put it back. Um, and so forth. Now I wanted to show you the Z ordering here because if I click on this, um, I can move this. Now the stack is basically, uh, if it's on top, that means it's closest to us or looks like it's on top visually. Whereas this, the block stacking is uh, these two. So I have uh, a, a text animation right there and the, the hand animation appears on the timeline above that. But if I wanted to go have it be behind, I could go uh, move uh, to, to back. And you'll see that I see sprinkle sonnet. Now I can also double click on any stat, any block, and it's going to push it to the back automatically. So that's just a shortcut for that. So um, you can see that also if I wanted the uh, the hand to appear underneath or within the monitor, what I could do is go ahead and now that's what the stacking uh, is. And so I can have it go to the bottom of the stack. And you can see it now looks like it's inside of the monitor. So the monitor is, is basically stacked or Z the Z positioning, it's, you know, uh, basically whether or not it's closer to us or farther away from us. Uh, so that's changed even though it, it, it appears below it still on the timeline itself. So I can adjust that if I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and move that back to the top. 
And uh, basically I wanted to show you that you have all these different options uh, to do animations with so you are not just limited uh, to putting something that kind of just out in space. You can do masking and all kinds of neat stuff like that with the new image animation tool that uh, was added in version 1.09 of Kinetic Text Animator.